The season finale of Moon Knight just dropped on Disney Plus and they did a lot in this episode. So let's talk what has now become the best MCU show. Finding himself trapped in paradise, Mark must find a way to rescue Steven from the sands of the reeds as Layla attempts to free Khonshu so they can stop the summoning of Ahmet. Before I properly get started today with my review of Moon Knight, I'm going to talk about the season. I'm going to give you an episode breakdown and recap. I'm going to give you an ending and post credit scenes explained. So there will be spoilers. Make sure you watch the episode before coming back here. But when you do come back here, let me know your thoughts on the show in the comments. How do you rank the episodes? How do you feel about the show overall? Do you think it stuck the landing? How do you compare it to everything else in the MCU? Anything and everything down there. And if you love the MCU, if you love movies and TV, this is the place to be. Consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies, TV. As this is an MCU heavy week, I just uploaded my review of Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness. Spoilers free for that one. But let's talk Moon Knight where we get thrust back where we left off in episode 4. Right back inside Alexander the Great's tomb where Harrow has just shot Mark apologizing for this deed to both Mark and Steven. The writing plus Ethan Hawke's gracious performance of this character continue to craft what is one of the most compelling antagonists in the MCU. As after this, he leaves the Scarab, he leaves off to free Ahmet from the pyramid. And we even get a moment with Layla feeling this sorrow of this loss of her husband, plus this man who she started to have some feelings for as she infiltrates Harrow's entourage on their way to the pyramid. We get there, Facing off against all the other gods and their avatars, Harrow takes them down and they free the giant alligator lady, crafting this compelling antagonist where as soon as Ahmet gets freed, Harrow is ready to die for his actions. He's ready to die for the sins he committed as an avatar of Khonshu in the past. His strong iron will, his purpose, his goal, and his incredibly strong core belief were to free Amit. So now he's ready. He's even ready to give his place to others who follow him, who are devoted, who the scales have judged as good people. So to the very end, this character continues to come across as extremely compelling as he's just devoted to this cause. But once again, we dive into this relationship between man and God, where Amit sees this vulnerability, this fragility, and she takes advantage of it. Where Amit sees this weakness within Harrow, she sees this fragility, and she takes advantage of it, alluring him teasing him how he's forgiven how he will do her bidding as she sees this incredibly devoted person who sees nothing else than to serve her and that is contrasted when Layla does free Khonshu and he tries to strike a deal with her for her to become her avatar where she herself is in this moment of fragility having just lost her husband and her strong iron will doesn't allow her to be tempted she doesn't give in to Khonshu's appeal she just wants her husband back and speaking of her husband back in paradise Mark is not whole he's not ready to carry on the guilt the weight of the loss of Steven this personality he created to carry all his pain all his anguish and protected them until the end. So there's this kind of reversal of fate where now it's Mark's turn to pay Steven back to go rescue him. And there's this beautiful scene where they come together, where they become whole as a duo. And just seeing Oscar Isaac playing off of himself so naturally with such charisma, with so different characters at the same time, it's incredible to watch. The gate opens, they're allowed to leave with the help of Tawaret. She brings on her boat and stops this massive wave of sand from crushing them. And as soon as Mark comes back to life, Khonshu senses it in the middle of this losing battle against Amet. And we're going to talk about these two fighting later in this recap. But now Mark 
has the power. He heals himself with the suit and all. But as Concho is ready to deliver his message to order Mark to do his bidding, Steven is also there. It's just cool to see them changing back and forth. Now they have the power. Now they hold all the chips. And so we head to our final battle where Mark does not fight alone. Layla has become now the Scarlet Scarab. Now in the comics, this is a very different character. There have been two Scarlet Scarabs, one named Abdul Faul and another named Mehmet Faul. I don't know much about the latter, but Abdul was originally a villain who eventually became a hero, a protector of Egypt against British Empire. But I love how Marvel just picks these obscure characters and makes it their own in these shows as Layla accepts to be the temporary avatar for Tawaret and Mekel Maui. She's an unsung hero of this show. She even has a scene where Tawaret is speaking through her as a callback to episode three. And she plays this so naturally, effortlessly showcasing this range of emotions as Tawaret is extremely excited to have an avatar. And Layla is just finding out that her father found peace. He went through the reeds. He found his paradise. He became whole. And so it's just kind of wholesome to get this character to feel a sense of inner peace by the end of the series. And her costume is awesome. Feels very much like a, a Lady Hawk or Hawk Girl kind of costume. But it's great to see her in action. It's great to see her working with Mark and Steven, who are working together, seamlessly changing back and forth in the battlefield. We get to see Mr. Knight kicking some ass, taking no names, all these acrobatics that I did kind of question at the time. That was one of my things like, oh, okay, Steven can now suddenly fight. But I guess muscle memory is a thing that is a very nitpicky thing, but is something I couldn't help but notice. And we're finally getting that action for an extended period of time. No blacking out, no cutting away, just action seeing Moon Knight kicking ass, Mr. Knight kicking ass, and now the Scarlet Scarab, which eventually leads to the confrontation with Harrow, which proves a worthy adversary. And as we see these two devoted men to their god, these men that were broken through their faith, fighting against one another, the intimate character story and then just next to them the giant mythological battle between two freaking kaiju gods fighting next to a pyramid and it's all kinds of awesome just seeing the intimate scope of the show contrasted visually at the literal same time with its massive scale that explores this Egyptian mythology and these giant gods that control beings and all that. It's fantastic to watch. I had such a blast with this final battle. But Mark and Layla begin to get overwhelmed. Harrow takes control. He stabs Mark in the chest, he begins to take away his soul. Layla is fighting off a literal machine gun to her face. And then we have a blackout. Now this leads to one of the shots we have seen in the early trailers of the show. I'm going to leave that to the proper post credit scenes explained. But once Mark comes to, he realizes Steven didn't do what he's looking at. We see a mauled Harrow on the ground, bleeding stuff burning around them, the street is destroyed, everyone else is on the ground, defeated, maybe dead. We even get a moment of Layla shocked, asking Mark what the hell was that, and she is no stranger to Mark's violence, she's no stranger to what he can do as Moon Knight, so that's yet another clue at something really fishy going on. And so Mark and Layla together take Harrow's body, inside the pyramid and along with the statues of the gods they trap Amit inside Harrow and as Mark is ready to deal conscious punishment he finally makes a choice of his own. He doesn't have to obey this god who cares not for him. They defeated Amit, the deal is done, Mark is free 
And it's okay to be free. He doesn't have to feel that guilt anymore. That growth that he went through last week is paid off with the trust that Steven earned from him and vice versa. Now working together alongside Layla. And so Kanshu leaves. Or does he? Because our final scene, my friends, as Mark is set free of this power... As he accepts his vulnerability, he overcomes his trauma, finally facing it. Waking up back in London, Stephen checking in if Mark is there. Mark checking in if Stephen's there. They have two goldfish. They're ready to accept their new normal life. And they're still trapped to the bed. Now, I love this finale. I love that the show just cuts off right then and there, bringing this character to a full circle moment, but shifting the status quo nonetheless, where we've answered all the questions we had for this season. But now we open some new chapters for the future, ready to expand on our understanding of this character and his worldview, because the post credit scene is so terribly exciting we cut to a wheelchair bound harrow in a mental institution kind of loopy he's clearly been drugged recently he's not all there and someone comes to take him someone who speaks spanish we don't see this person's face but we start little by little seeing little hints the brown jacket the beret on his head harrow looks to the side there's a receptionist on the floor bleeding and as harrow gets put in a limo there's Kanshu in this silky smooth drip of a suit and he presents his friend jake lockley a character we have been teased about all season long and with devilish glee and delight he smiles at arrow and shoots him in the head more than once and if you guys have followed me you know i called it I called this would be the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been predicting ever since episode 3 that the dynamic between the three personalities would be this, and I predicted that Khonshu would be after Jake Lockley, where any and all restraint that came with Mark as his avatar is now gone. Jake is even a worse version of Harrow. Harrow felt repent, he felt regret over taking pleasure in his violence. Jake does not. He's just happy to serve this god where Khonshu himself is painted in this very dark light, this conniving, cunning god that was taking advantage of the brokenness of Mark, always knowing Jacob was there, never letting him know, tricking into protecting his wife so he could be used by Khonshu. Now, I love this. I had a big grin on my face as a hardcore fan from the comics, but Jake is a very different character, for the better, I think. In the comics, Steven as well is a very different character. Steven in the comics is basically the Bruce Wayne personality in the ensemble of Moon Knight, while Jake Lockley works as a taxi driver. He takes on this street smart persona so he can gather information from the streets and then unleashes Moon Knight or Mr. Knight to deal punishment onto the criminal underworld. But in here we got to stand him and I love how Khonshu presents him as his friend. Not his avatar, not his subject, his friend. Which is again a very different dynamic than what we've seen throughout the six episodes between Khonshu and Mark, Khonshu and Steven. I love this. It's a payoff to all those little sprinkles throughout the show. I still don't think that was Jake in the security camera in episode 2. I do think it was him who killed the followers of Harrow in episode 3, where we first get the hint that that wasn't Steven who killed this guy, but clearly it wasn't Mark as well. And then in this finale, we have that blackout and that, that utter destruction of everything and everyone within that immediate era of the final battle. And season two is definitely going to give us more of Jake. I think we're going to see where Jake was all along through season one. I think we're even going to see Khonshu striking this deal. Now, season two has not been confirmed. I think it's only a matter of time. I even think they're going to probably, quote unquote, upgrade Moon Knight to a movie status. And I think we could get Moon Knight as a film next, expanding on our understanding of season one. But 
as a whole, I had a few issues with this episode particularly, where it felt like it rushed through the necessary beats. Unlike most of the Disney Plus shows, this isn't an episode that had a ton of things to deal with in this finale. It clearly handled everything it needed to do right. I felt just overall it needed to allow some moments to breathe just a little bit more. So five more minutes on the overall runtime would have perfectly fixed this. This is for me the weakest episode of the show, but I would still give it like a B or even B+. The show from the beginning had this precise pace where I even think this finale is helped if you watch 5 and 6 back to back. This basically feels like a three part movie and I think the show greatly benefits from being viewed in that way. But what really made Moon Knight as a show overall deliver for me was its constant focus on character and character pathos, delivering this beautiful journey of coping, of growth, of overcoming trauma, and never went really that crazy unless it served the story. With its gorgeous cinematography, fabulous score, they give this distinct voice and identity to the series. The stellar performances from Isaac through and through. Even this quick moment of playing Jake Lockley in the post credit scene, how rapidly he shifts from one character to the next seamlessly and effortlessly and yet you can see the difference in his performance. It's a show that delivers all the spectacle and fantasy that you could want from a Marvel property but at its core it is a personal intimate tale about how broken people are preyed upon by gods and how that brokenness is taken advantage of and then you have a character who overcomes that brokenness who uses that vulnerability to become stronger to become whole and it's kind of beautiful from beginning to end moon knight delivered incredible pathos to stephen and mark's harrowing journey through overcoming trauma while bringing it all to a compelling full circle moment i'm giving moon knight an a and that ends our week to week reviews of Moon Knight, at least for now. Thank you so much for joining me in this journey. And if you haven't, if you want to check out those Moon Knight reviews, they're right up here on this playlist. Thank you so much for watching this video. I can now wait to see what you thought of the show. And like I said, MCU heavy week. There's a ton of MCU reviews right now on the channel and a ton more MCU and Doctor Strange content to come in the next few days. I hope to see you in those. And if you like what you saw here, Make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future conversation in your favorite movies and TV. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my channel members for supporting the channel. And until the next one, love each other and love the movies.